Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Presence Online Sharing. I am Michelle, and uh, I am from Rooftop Productions. And today we have some more people with us here. And we also have. Uh, I'm Ivor. I'm also from Rooftop Productions. I don't think I need to say much more about me. Let yeah. me hand the mic to Kenny. Yes, and here we have the media artist Kenny Wong who collaborated with us this time. Hello, I'm Kenny Wong from Things That Move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a warm up like right now. So, um online audience, do you like can you hear us? Like give us some emojis, you know? Emojis. Let's do a live streaming thing. Like give us some emojis or you know reactions if you can hear us, see us or you know if you like looking forward to the start of these things and because I think maybe you have a glimpse of, oh yeah, Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany from YouTube. Yeah, we can see your comments like live, so you can. Let us know if you're here. Cool. Hi, hi, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, welcome to Presence Online Presentation. This is actually an online participatory program that we have, the three of us actually collaborate for like how many years? I don't know, since 2020. Two, yeah, we've been- Two, two years and more? Yeah, two years and more. Two, two and a, two-ish year, like, yeah. yeah. So we've been collaborating on this projects for two and something years. And um, yeah, and this is actually the end of phase two. This online sharing is the end of phase two. And we just did our performances for phase two, like in the last two weeks from the 17th to the 26th of March. And today we are going to, um, be here and then maybe talk to you or about what we have been through in this two and a half years or you know what kind of things we have actually tried to do or you know what we have done and uh yeah so that would be it i hope you're excited with for it <laughs> i am i'm excited that you know the experimental phase is kind of like finished and then now we can really like review what we have done or reflect on what we have done because um I think in this process, I do have a lot of new things that I've tried. I don't know, of course you guys, right? You know, it's not just me. Uh, but uh, we can talk about talk a little bit about maybe um, uh, the the work that we, we are mainly in charge of in the whole show. So I am Michelle from Rooftop and I do the uh, producing job and also the uh, mainly focus on the creative content. This too also, you know, uh, put, a, put in a lot of ideas in the creative content, but I'm the person who uh, write the words out most of the time. And yeah, and Ivan, what do you do? I do the programming. It's a little bit crazy that I've done the programming because I'm actually a theater person. So all my training <laughs> is in is in theater and I have qualifications to be things like a theater director. But somehow in this project, I've ended up doing all like 100% of the programming, which yeah. is very weird. Yeah, what is your BA? <laughs> <laughs> European <laughs> theater arts. Oh, um, Plug, Rose Bruford, yes. <laughs> and then my MA is uh, Goldsmiths performance making. So I, I'm totally unqualified for this uh, role entirely, but I seem to have got through it. <laughs> what about you, Kenny? Um, I'm the mechatronics of this project, so I make the hardware and yeah, electronics and making the things that moving around. So things that move. Yeah, <laughs> and then connect with the programming <laughs> and the things. Yeah, and, and yeah, I'm also like a self thought of kind of like mechatronics so I m my background is like uh just a little bit of programming and a little bit of like media arts and and yeah I just try and error and make these things yeah yeah that's great and um yeah I am um I trained in theater and performance making so I'm actually kind of doing the things that uh I am trained at but I can't say that this is really a performance. We always say that this is a program, this is a project instead of a performance or a show. Mm. Because, um, you know, in the process of it, it's actually changed a bit. And then we'll go into it and tell you more about that. And there's a comment, it's like, Bobo, say that. The research sharing was also in March two years ago. Yeah, it is. Mm. And that was hosted by um, Wes Kalun. 
yeah, two years ago, and today we just have a more chill or you know more kind of a casual talk about the what we we have done. So uh, let's start. Um, maybe we can go back to uh, phase one. So two years ago, what we have done. Thank you, Kelvin. <laughs> So this is phase one. So in phase one, um, we actually um, produce five cars, five of these cars. Very cool photo, Ivo. It's still very cool. Yeah, and you can see the bubble wrap around it. And then this time, we don't use bubble wrap anymore. Although it is very, how can we say? It's like a kind of um, um, cyberpunk thing. Yeah, we quite like this style, but maybe for the second time, like in the second phase, we need to change the outlook of the car a little bit and make it look more like a thing, right? Yeah, but it's still cool. And then um, this photo actually summarizes what we have done in phase one. We have one performer uh, performing with uh, four of the cars, and then we have uh, four of them running at the same time in a warehouse. You can see that it is a warehouse. Uh, it's actually in the corridor of the warehouse, not really the whole warehouse. So it's like a very linear role that the audience can just travel from point A to point B. And then they have tasks, and then they also listen to the um, performers talking to them. The, perf perf the performers can't really see their reactions to when they type. Yeah, and then um, the cars can talk to the performer last time too, but through text-to-speech. Mm -hmm. So that is like a, a kind of robotic sound instead of a you know, your real voice. It was actually quite difficult to deal with. It was very hard to understand what it's saying sometimes. And we were also supporting English and Cantonese. And the Cantonese text-to-speech is much less sophisticated. Uh, so this time we've gone in a different direction, but we'll introduce more about that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, so this this picture kind of summarized everything. And um, so um, this is what we have done in phase one. So it's kind of like an exhibition, but in a warehouse. And then we put a lot of um, objects that we found, like kind of uh, junk that people don't want anymore. They were found in the warehouse, and then we just put it there and put it as an exhibition, talking about how people um, really produce a lot of rubbish, first of all. <laughs> and the second of all is like um, about leaving, leaving the place, yeah, or leaving things behind. Yeah, and last time we also have an uh, observer page. It's kind of like this, four, like five cameras. You can choose from different angles to uh, watch from as an observer. You can also type, uh, but you can see that we don't have any user interface at all. It is like basic functional. Oh, well, that's the user interface. It's just a bad one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no design in the user interface, and then we just got like five cameras, and then you can choose from it, and then you can also leave comments. But actually, the... Um, the performer can't see it. Uh, no, indeed. Yeah, no. So uh, this will be the main thing that we have done in phase one. And uh, it's two years ago. Uh, we still run things on Wi-Fi at that time, not really, uh, what do we call it? Like, Ooh. so we are really running things on Wi-Fi at that time. Uh, but this time is different. We are running things on 5G, actually. Yeah, and uh, because we're just running Wi-Fi, that's why we can just put things indoor instead of like we can go outdoor because Wi-Fi just were indoors, right? Yeah, this was a big barrier for us last time that we had to contend with fitting out this big space with Wi-Fi access points. And then we still had problems when the car would transition between the access points and we'd lose the video stream for a second. Uh, so we really wanted to overcome that this time so we're not no longer having to fit out this whole big space with Wi-Fi points and we wanted to be able to go outside. Yep. And then, yeah, this was the team last team. time. I still like this picture a lot, like especially with the different colors of lights uh, from the car. Yeah, you can choose your lights, uh, the colors of the light. Like last time you can do it, this time you can still do it. Yeah. And uh, hi, Boas, and hi, Meredith. Hi. <laughs> yeah. And uh, last time we have seven, like no more, no less, only seven in our team. And uh, this time we have a bigger team. Yeah. So this is kind of what phase one we have done five cars, seven people, a corridor in a warehouse. That's it. But then phase two, uh, we are actually quite. Um, I, I cannot say this, but you can see that it's actually quite ambitious. <laughs> Let's see what we've done. So this is Presence Phase 2. Um, at Presence Phase 2, we actually want to do a lot of things. First thing, we want to put the car outside. 
Yeah, this is our main thing. And then I was thinking like how to put the car outside. Yes, of course, with 5G. But then uh, when do we start this? I think it's before your son is born, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's like maybe, o maybe o in August. Yeah, yeah, something like August. Something like August. Yeah. yeah. So you can see, still see here. We still use the bubble wrap car from phase one, but then we put a phone on it. And the phone actually becomes quite an important part later on in the whole um, structure of the car. And uh, it's kind of like the brain of the car later on. But uh, Ifa will tell you later on about like the, the Compar brain. Comparatively, last time we used like a mini computer called Raspberry Pi to, to run everything, run the radio stream and everything. But like this time we integrate everything. Everything seems to have in the phone. Yeah. And Ifa start to develop all the yeah. things like the computer, the brain, the main brain in the in the phone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is kind of our first experiment and see how it actually goes with a phone on the car. Yeah, and then, Ivor, do you want to explain this thing? I really like need to find this piece of scrap paper out and put it here for all of you because this is actually the start of how we want things to be done, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we were struggling to find a, a kind of way of fitting all of this together. We wanted to use different spaces, but we weren't sure how it would fit. So uh, Michelle wants me to tell this story, which is that I just went off to the toilet and <laughs> came back with this idea. We were at Kenny's studio. Yeah. And then at that time, we are talking about, OK, we want to put the car outside, but then how? Like, how do we transform, no, 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 transport or teleport from one car to the other one? And then also, how can we plan the journey for the audience? And then so we are quite stuck at that point. And then I went to the toilet. And after you went to the toilet, what happened? Well, I just I started thinking in a slightly different paradigm of 3D games as the kind of uh, dramaturgy of the show. So we wanted this kind of, or I thought of this kind of hub space in the middle as a way of transitioning between worlds. It would have been nice if it could be a real space, but I thought, you know, you need as many cars as people in each space. So if you've got this hub world, you can't do it in the real world because you need, you need, I don't know, 15 cars just for that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought we should do it in 3D because it's the closest analog in terms of the controls you have yeah. you can feel like there's some kind of continuous journey between worlds if we can emulate the same experience as driving the real physical car with a 3d world instead uh, the problem was i had no idea how to do 3d <laughs> at the time yeah. so i decided oh, okay i've got to learn 3d just to make this idea <laughs> idea work yeah you probably learn a lot of other things too do you still remember your first reaction to what's this idea when he really like scrapped the things on the paper I don't remember. You don't really remember. I don't remember. Yeah. At, at that time, I was like, uh, I, I, I do remember my reactions. Is like, uh, wow, maybe this idea is like really how, how it works. Because it's also bring back to my uh, experience in watching Punch Drunk like ages ago, you know, we were in Goldsmiths in 2000, around 2020, 2013. And at mm -hmm. that time, Punch Drunk, Punch Drunk is a great hit. And then we go to their shows. It's kind of like you got, yeah, the, the Wojciech one. And then you, it feels like you travel to different spaces and then you open the door, it feels like a portal. And then you have different portals to go to uh, all the spaces. And I really think that it's like, oh, maybe this is what we are trying to go for. But then after that, we need to think about build a 3D space. The car need to um, uh, teleport to different places. And then we need to find different real world places for the cars and things like that and actually the whole program start to form its um its uh, the formation or you know take formation uh, yeah, the structure of it mm. at that time mm. yeah yeah and then we start doing doing things of course <laughs> we uh, start to find out what real world spaces we want to go to or want to take the car to we need to think about like Putting the car outdoor is very different, I think, in the mechatronics and also in programming, not just the 3D space, but actually the communication between the, the phone and the car, everything and the use of 5G, um, a lot of stuff. And to be honest, talking about the 5G thing, uh, I think this project really happens at a good time because um, before October 2022, which is half a year before this thing has to, uh, these things uh, uh, like like we have our show. Actually, there's no prepaid 5G SIM card in Hong Kong. Mm. Yeah. So, 
technology is not just like something you want to develop. It's about like a whole world, people around you. They also develop technology, and then you can use that and put it in your show or you apply it in your show. So it's kind of like um, I think in this project, I also have another kind of view about technology development in the whole world in a general. Instead of like like it's like everybody is improving at the same time, so that you can do more things. Instead of I'm just trying to break through stuff by myself. Yeah, and iPhone 12 is the first iPhone that can run 5G. So without that, actually, you can't do much about it. Yeah. It's not an advertisement, but yeah. Uh, so you can also see here, uh, yeah, we, first of all, uh, like in the first place, we actually think about taking cars to go to car park and warehouse and markets and farm and beach. And people who actually um, came to the show, you'll know that everything's changed. It's not yeah. like that anymore, right? Mm. But actually, the, the market was the inspiration for the, some of the stuff we did with the objects in the show. Because we wanted to pass, uh, wanted to be able to teleport objects between different spaces, right? So originally the idea was a fish. <laughs> you buy a fish in the market, right? And then you can take it to another space. It's a totally terrible idea. We we should never do it. But that was the original absurd idea that led to the more doable idea of things like seeds and stones and stuff that you can take between different spaces. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I see a question here is from Becky. When did you decide to use 5G system? 2020, second uh, October? Not really. Like, I think after last uh, phase of presence, we already talk about using 5G with, with Kelvin over there behind the monitors. Yeah, we have uh, actually talking about using 5G because this is the breakthrough. You, this is the only thing that you can rely on to take the cars outside and still maintain the quality and the low latency things. Because driving the car, you really need low latency. If not, you crash and bump into things, and it's, the whole experience is not immersive at all. And um, yeah, That is the thing. Is it's, yeah. part, it's not just the bandwidth of 5G. It's the fact that it has less, less latency because it's higher frequency. So it really helps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it, I don't know. This application seems like the right one for it. Yeah. Maybe the, maybe the, the 5G program, you know, really... Yeah, not sponsored. Yeah, not sponsored, yeah, not sponsored. but yeah, you can talk to <laughs> us. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, this is like uh, we think that we need to use five G at that time already, but then we never really go into the experiment of you know finding do we have the right gadgets and things like that, and and uh, because we were working on some other projects in two thousand twenty one, and that's why we just put this project on hold for a bit, and because we have put it on hold. That's why things can happen now, I think. Yeah. So this is kind of, I have to put it here, is because this is kind of uh, the day, the time, the paper that make this whole performance take form, I think. Yeah. So let's see. And after this, we start making the cars because we know that the cars need to go outside right and then the whole wheel system and also the whole frame needs to be uh needs to be a little bit different and uh, in the video on the right hand side you can actually see it's the video of the first time we try out the car in kenny's studio although he is going to a new studio later on and uh, yeah and um this is the first time we connect the phone to the car and see if we can uh, drive it around. Yeah, and um, that was a wow moment <laughs> for the three of us. Yeah, I think the wow moment is like we use the phone, especially like iPhone, there is a lot of restriction Yeah. Uh, within and without. Very secure. With, yeah, the things, and then we have to connect the electronics that are uh, able to communicate with it. Yeah. So there are lots of things that I think iPhones go through. Yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll talk in more detail later, but yeah, it's it's a nightmare really working with the iPhone and trying to connect it to other devices. It's it's great in some ways. It's reliably connecting to the five G, but uh, it's certainly a challenge to try and program. That's overly secured by the yeah. <laughs> iPhone system, but it's like very quirky. yeah, there's uh yeah, especially connecting something that ought not supposed to be. Uh, they are not originally designed for that. So, you know, there yeah. is always an F for that, but there's not an F for that, you know. <laughs> Trying to break into it. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, after we put the phone on the car, and this is the first time we really connect the phone and the car, and then, yeah, and make it work. 
And this is the 3D space, the first time that is still, uh, this time is in our house in uh, Chunwan. And then uh, Kenny come to our house and then I built a kind of um, the first 3D world he has ever made. look for I mean. the glitch on the very first system. Yeah, the glitch or, <laughs> uh, yeah, or doing the physics, is it the physics? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah the physics. The physics and the weird gravity, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is the first time we did that. And after this kind of uh, research process, this is what we want people to see uh, later on. And this is actually uh, photos from the show, um, which is a real performer at a real space uh, talking to you or, you know, interacting with you, while at the other end is the audience looking into their own monitors and seeing the things like right in front of um, their, their monitor. Yeah, so this is the concept and then they can communicate. This time they can talk, uh, not text to speech. They can really talk with their own voice to the, to the um, audience. And also we have a concept uh, from the fish that the, yeah, from the fish idea, um, that we can give items or you know take items from the uh, audience, you know, from the car, or and then uh, it's also uh, interact with the user interface, and they know that you have taken stuff, or you know they know that they have given stuff to you. This is also one of the things we want to do. Um, also, stopping the cars from going into dangerous place. Last time we don't have that at all. We just have our own bare hands to stop the cars, or our own bare feet and bubble wrap and bubble wrap to stop the cars. And this time we have more uh, advanced things uh, through using the RFID system and also a sensor. But I think Kenny will talk about it more later on. And yeah, so our cars start to take form uh, because of the uh, of the idea of traveling to different spaces. And now maybe Kenny, you can talk mm. us through the mechatronics part. Yeah, sure. It's the location first. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. the location. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Back so here. yeah, <laughs> the locations. Let just briefly go through it. Uh, we've chosen five locations for uh, this show, and uh, through the 3D space, you can go to five different locations. Oh, this is the map actually, and uh, it's kind of like a star, like everywhere in Kowloon. We have two places in the uh, territory, uh, new territories. We got one, and then we also have one in Pok Fulam and one. In a island, Ping Chow. Yeah. So a lot of discrete places in Hong Kong. And uh, the first one is actually a beach on Ping Chow. Yeah. And um, you can see in this uh, video, uh, the wheels are a little bit different on Ping Chow, you know, because they need to walk on sand. And then uh, on the beach, we have a lot of uh, rubbishes that we pick up. Not we, it's actually our performer, Bun Ho, pick up from in Ping Chow. And then we put it there as kind of like an exhibition. And then this is the, the beach that we stay at for that two weeks. And we also found a rooftop, which is actually the West Kowloon uh, PSO rooftop. Yeah. And uh, uh, in there, uh, we put a Elfie there to do portraits for people. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny this shot yeah and then uh and there we also have an observation deck that the cars can go up to and then um if the weather is good actually you can see the sunset mm, yeah but that, sunset. that only happens in the first week well oh well <laughs> this is the fate of site specific right the car seems to be very smooth on the sand in the beach is quite impressive yeah can you can talk about the wheels later on oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so uh and then we have uh, found a listed heritage in hong kong this is uh, an idea that i always want to put it in here because i think hong kong has many different kind of face or faces that you can show people we can have the beach we can have the nice uh, mountain and beach and we can also have the city view but also we have a lot of listed heritage with a lot of um, you know colonial history background in it yeah and this is actually university hall and um, uh, thanks to university hall for uh, their hospitality and you know uh, generous sharing of their history to us and let us use their space and uh, we have also positioned one of our actors yes here Sam there and to guide people through uh, the history of u Hall and also um, talk a little bit about community and humanity, I think. Yeah. So uh, fourth space is a garden. Uh, we actually started to want to use a farm, 
But then we can't find a farm with 5G network in Hong Kong yet. And then that's why we go to a, a garden in um, near Peng Shack Estate, is near Choi Hong. Yep. And they have 5G network, network over there. And we also put July there, who is actually a farmer or part-time <laughs> farmer. Yeah. And then talk about, you know, land ownership and also yeah, that kind of topic. And then the last one, we use a home. Yeah, a home. And uh, we put an actor there uh, and use her own stories um, in this place. And um, yeah, so these are the five places that we have chosen uh, to put our performers and put our performances, put our cars in. And uh, because you can see it's quite a diverse uh, um diverse surface that they have to travel on or they have to walk on as the car, I mean. And that's why uh, the design of the car actually has to uh, adapt to everything too. So it's the mechatronics part. <laughs> <laughs> the real mechatronics part. Okay. So yeah, the the car is quite different from the first, like the phase one, yeah, very yeah. prototype uh, bubble wrap thing. Sure. That one was using like a kind of like a multi-directional wheel that the, the car can drive like in horizontal like directions. Like they can sway. They can sway, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we kind of eliminate that because like it has a pros and cons that it's like um, the cons is like uh, it's quite noisy and it's like making the camera is quite bumpy and and, and, and it's I think it's very difficult for, for a real like long uh, experience like a one hour experience mm -hmm. so this time we emphasize on a lot on like making the experience uh able to run for an an hour and the audience is still feel comfortable uh, uh still uh yeah mm -hmm. um yep and so you see there's like a phone on the top and and yeah and 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 we we kind of start from that and then i uh, a lot of time on the difficulties and the thing is like how to stabilize the the camera and and we use a kind of a hacky way you will see that later and you see the car and we change the wheel to like a like a this called so called like differential driving so actually it's four uh wheels that is also saying facing the same direction but they are uh uh on both sides they they yeah they run on different um speed and then so you can turn so it's much easier it's still like have the having the uh direction and other things and then also uh it's not like a a, a real car that you have to learn to turn and other things like we want to we eliminate that because uh some of the audience maybe they don't have like gaming or they don't drive so but we still want it to be easy to drive so so you can turn like in a in the original spot, like the same spot, that's the thing. Like easy to easy to use, yeah. uh, less learning curve. And yeah, you see the factory, <laughs> the factory of cars. Like all the blue, blue thing there is the battery. So uh, one battery for one car, and and we, uh, fifteen. Yeah, we make fifteen, and then we we start with the first one that we you just saw in the video, and then we. We took it to the beach and then the most difficult location. Landscape. Yeah. And and we test it and then oh it seemed to work. And then so how uh yeah, the the, the consideration on that is like uh to match to the different outdoor or the things of the uh uh of the locations, this the suspension actually is quite important actually. Mm. Cause like the suspension will you eliminate the bumpiness and also uh, able to grab the uh, different traction, like yeah, it will it will able to grab different surfaces. Mm -hmm. So so once we have the suspension system and then we have the stabilization of the the phone and then we can start okay, now start making it. Mm -hmm. And actually, the the car frame is made from like a. Yeah, the <laughs> the frame is actually like a a, a kind of DIY. Uh, 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 like a, I think like a toy car things, but it's a metal frame. And then actually I just got the frame and then eliminated the other motor stuff because like 
is like as the experience for for the for the show we have to be have a very high quality motors and things to to make it silent so the so you can focus on the on the experience so you don't hear other noises and uh, uh, Arissa says the car ne- cars never fail to amaze me so cool and I got to drive them. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Arissa <laughs> thank you <laughs> And and yeah, and then we start to adding things on on it, like so 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 I I am so we start making three D printed parts uh, like bumpers and things like eliminate the bubble wrap from last time, and then we start having a real bumper to to uh, to make it able to be robust enough to drive like for the two week shows. Yeah, I want to say that the bubble wrap thing is style, but it's also a last minute thing. Yeah, but this time we're more planned. We are more yeah. planned. This like uh. <laughs> Two weeks, I don't know how many hours of prints there, and yeah, the thing is like oh, I also start with like uh, uh cat drawings, so everything is planned in in place, and then I can three D print the parts and things, and then uh making the car that oh, it's possible to put everything there. So you, as you see from here, actually there is like a at the front, there is like a. This is quite a uh, a new thing for us to put a RFID receiver on each car, and so each car is like you have an octopus uh, receiver there, and then so you can, uh, but this you see there the, the size is quite big, and actually you can detect around twenty thirty meters uh, centimeters, so it has a a certain distance that we can play with, yeah. and we can put like. Avoidance like stop signs and also task things. Yeah, so uh, maybe in here you can actually see it better with the RFID, mm. and uh, yeah. So in the car here, you can actually uh, the RFID is actually in the front, yeah, and then we have uh, these yellow flags uh, laying everywhere in different performance spaces, and actually this is an RFID tag, and so when the car goes nearby. Or you know when they find the flag, and then it's like a batatong, yeah, an octopus card, and they can do it, and then there will be a card, yeah, you know, <laughs> do it, yeah, and then, and then there will be a card coming from uh, the. If, right if there's side. anyone joining us from abroad, then an octopus card is what we use for the MTR oyster. for the metro here. It's <laughs> like yeah, like an oyster card in London or something. So it's just like a, a or a credit card or anything. It's just something that you scan. Yeah, yeah. So, or, or like the hotel room, you tell the. To the re- to the reception, the car does uh, the yeah. car doesn't work, and then they change it for you. Yeah. It's like actually they use a RFID reader and and a writer, and then they change the yeah. ID for you, and then so you can lock unlock the door. It's yeah. it's the same technology. Yes. Yeah, and this RFID is actually the the main function that we put it in because after phase one, we actually think about oh maybe we can give a magnetic uh, key to this car, or maybe we can give a claw to this car. You know, there are a lot of like crazy ideas, but then it is actually not very feasible to you know make so many different types of car, and then. That's why we uh, decided to use RFID so that it can trigger things and then they can see things. And then it is also more of a feasi- feasible building um, uh, capacity for us, I think. Yeah. And I think if I, if you make a claw and then it will start giving like yeah. a robot wars or yeah. something like that, it's like totally driving to other Yeah, you grab the, direction, grab yeah. the performance ankle and things. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you I'll could do, do it on another show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some other stuff. Yeah. So uh, let's go back to the mechatronics part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, and then they start to make everything in assembling on that. And then you see the, the screen and the monitor and the things. It's like uh, actually it's a direct, uh, there's a da- adapter that sending out the the mirror of the screen of uh, of the iPhone, the screen of the iPhone. So yeah. the performer can see it. Knowing what's happening and also seeing the chat and the things yeah. and knowing the driver names and things. Yeah. So so yeah, here's the <laughs> the assembling factory, uh, and you see the stabilizer. The stabilizer is the fun thing, and also uh, yeah, I've been looking for how to make it stabilize and. And I think the easiest way and the budget way is like finding a chip, <laughs> gimbal. Uh, gimbal, and and then I hack it because like it's like a you know, it's like it's like a product, and then and it has a so, so the thing that we need is actually having a 
a tilt function that we, we can look up and down. And then the other thing is just uh, we need to stabilize to avoid the vibration from, from external vibrations. Mm -hmm. So, and then actually you see on the left is like uh, the gimbal actually has a joystick and then we actually has uh, removed the joystick and we put in our electronics to control the joystick digitally. So we, so if I can write the program to control my electronics to control the phone. So at the right is like you see the the phone the gimbal is totally hacked, but it's still working. the The gimbal is still thing is like uh oh I'm working normally and then <laughs> and then it becomes like this right. this trick. Um, and yeah, this is the monitors. Uh, it's just a typical uh, uh, LCD monitors. And, but we put a 3D pin and a mount and then so it can be put in on a car. And the buttons, uh, the buttons and the battery meter is for the indication for every operators to know like if the status of the cars. And the buttons is quite important in this uh, uh, whole the, the show. Give yeah, the, the mm. give and take task and the task going through the world or a different world. Yeah. yeah so so yeah mm. so this is how the actors uh managed managed to give items and take items from you so it's always you know one side press on one side of the car to take the item press on the other side to give the item and then each space has these two set items so the car knows which space it's in or the server knows which space it's in so when you press the button it records it as that item being given and then there's just a little led flash to reassure the actor that they've really pressed it and also like on the right and yeah the actors uh take the oh, photos yeah. right this this we was a time it. consuming thing to, i don't know if i should explain it now or explain it in the programming maybe yeah, yeah. oh okay yeah. okay <laughs> yeah and the rfid uh receiver and sender and so we put yeah the tag as a flag and the thing so the is a kind of obvious uh indication in yeah, the real world right more like a game it kind of make it more like a game, you know, and you need to find the flags and go there. And it's kind of like a point for you to, you, you know, be there. Yeah. Uh, so Becky asks, how long does it take to build a car like this? Mm, depends on what this process you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> the prototype it's taking us two years. The prototype, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the prototype takes a, take quite a long time. It's like really of uh, because we want to put a, year a lot of things in the car and then we yeah. start to, you yeah. know, like, and then you, we have to, be, make it happen you have to yeah. limit the things and yeah. then the, the the right time to make the limitation is and then we start building the car <laughs> yeah. i think the prototype is like take take us the longest and then after we think that the prototype actually works and then we have experiment with it and then building the remaining cars is not really that long i think two to three weeks yeah but it's yeah. a very intensive one yeah very because intensive like, week uh, yeah. actually because because wh why we have to design everything and then and then because we are making 15 cars and yeah, like hut hong gong chong right yeah because like <laughs> if we making one car for one hour and then we have to times 15 two cars will be 13 hour, 30 hours so so we have to in the production it's very really hard and then i mean if we have to plan everything and then so so like also this is like the sensor we have added to the car on the cars actually have like six sensors it's a distance sensor that uh it's a laser distance sensor it detects yeah. things in the real time so we don't have bubble wrap but we have bumper but it's still maybe not enough and then so we add adding extra safety to make like uh, uh people like trying to over speed and bump into things uh yeah these are the sensors and so actually 15 times six is like 70 or something like i mean we, we are making a lot of sensors that so we have to do a lot of wirings and things so this is like the process yeah, yeah. do you want to explain the tin foil oh the tin foil yeah the tin foil is fun yeah uh, it's a last yeah, with the thing that because we have a RFID is a really strong RFID re, uh, sender and receiver, and then and then it uh, it has interference to each other. So and then it's a last minute thing that we add tin foil to to block the interference, so make the sensor still working and without uh, blocking the noise signals, the signal noise. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, it 
making everything in a such a compact car is it would create a lot because all the all the electrical wire is like a it's like a antenna yeah basically so so there are things that have to be uh put in and then we have to try and then to see the things yeah yes let's go back to the slides slides so and then it was well, and yeah, this is a, the because we are making fifteen cars, so it's better to have like our own custom made board that uh to avoid the errors and also avoid the mistakes like human mistakes. So, so and then it's the best way to to make a a, a PCB that integrate everything that we have decided to put in the car and then and then yeah become a electrical board and then start making it. So actually, we have like three uh microcontrollers in, in this. In this car, like uh, one is like mainly for a Wi-Fi connection with the iPhone, and also uh, one is like the main uh, main board is like a Tinsy. If yeah, uh, if you heard of it, uh, it's like uh, anyone care about this? Car? Yeah, it's a it's a. I think it's the one of the fastest uh, microcontroller that ha that could have. And so we we put like there are like six sensors and the. Uh, and and the RFID system and also communicating with the i uh it's like a main board and then there's another board it's like for the sensors, so they are they are free boards to to make everything able to work together. Mm. And yeah, this is the that's the, the factory part. The f yeah, the factory. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then we have the car now. We need to talk about the programming. Yay. Anyone care about this part? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Raise I your will, hand if you care about I this part. I try very hard our, not to make it boring. Our, yeah, yeah. Because you will see a lot of code. <laughs> and I, I won't show much I mean, code, honestly. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay. Just uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is the 3D stuff because this is the stuff that was totally new to me and took me a lot of time just to get started working on. Uh, and a big change from last time for me is that we've worked with two other people on this project that we brought in to help with some of the, the coding parts. Uh, so we brought in a 3D designer to do some of the modeling for us in the 3D world. Uh, so we would get files back like this with, you know, just a, a very simple kind of object that would help us um, communicate to the audience which portal is which, basically, rather than having to have a sign on it that says garden or something, we want it to be more slightly more of a surprise when you go through the portal for the first time. So it's just a very simple 3D world with objects to indicate what might be through the portals. Uh, so here's a little shot of some of the physics in the game. People seem to find this very fun. It's really just an incidental thing yeah. that I happen to put physics in. I really like uh, pushing those crocs when I have time. You know, when yeah. when we're doing testing, we got a lot of time staying in the lobby. And I really like pushing these crocs, you know, yeah. out, out of the way or, you know, out of the fence. This is one of the best game ever. Anyways, sorry, let's get <laughs> on. You can on. see the chairs. I went really crazy with this at one point and had spawned in, you know, a few hundred chairs and the whole space was full of this stuff. And it was really too much for people's computers. It's still too much for people's computers, to be honest. Uh, so we had to cut down a lot of the objects in the 3D world because we were trying to support, you know, uh, as, mu as many people as possible. Yeah. So I still need to find a better way of doing the 3D, to be honest, where we're not, you know, making people with older computers unable to play the game entirely. Uh, so we've done our best. Yeah, someone like said like love pushing the crocs too, uh, but yeah. went out of time to push more. Yeah, <laughs> I have that problem too. Yeah. Like crocs kicking the ball in the 3D world. Ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. Cool. Uh, I'm just going to show briefly what the code looks like for the 3D. It looks like there this. you go. Screen cap if you want to <laughs> do it. Cap. Screen cap. This it. is the player controller. This is what happens every frame <laughs> when you're trying to move around. <laughs> it's very boring. Skip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk about the UI and UX because we also brought in an external designer to draw out this yeah, UI think, stuff for us. Yes, I think. think it's great. And so he helped us a lot by very quickly coming up with the, the design for the UI. Great thing. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny's giving you a thumbs up. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so this, this was an amazing step forward from last time where it was really just me trying to do graphic design of UI because <laughs> I'm very bad at it. <laughs> I can code it, but I'm very bad at designing what it should look like or how a human can interact with it. So he was great for that. 
so on that's the, why it's a proper job. Come on. Yeah, he's a professional. I'm just a theatre guy. <laughs> so <laughs> on the once left, again, we're yeah. theatre people. <laughs> on the left, you can see my first attempt at doing the front page for presence, which is you know a default website terribleness. And on the right is his uh, revised version where we have a proper proper landing page. It's another wow wow so moment. This is yeah a big step forward for us. Uh, again, I'm going to show you the code. This is what it looks like when you implement Screen the cap. UI interface. It just looks the same as the other code. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah. uh, Give him some thumbs up. Thank you. <laughs> Encouragement. <laughs> yeah, I've been staring at this same thing for months. Uh, so this is a big change for us. Uh, going from the Kenny already mentioned this. Going from the Raspberry Pi to a phone as the main kind of brain of the car. Every time when they talk about Raspberry Pi, I really think about this like a real Raspberry Pi, but no, oh, it's actually yeah. a computer. Yeah, that thing at the top is a Raspberry Pi. We take it for granted that people know what we're talking about, but maybe they think we're talking about a, a Raspberry, real Raspberry Pi. Pi. Uh, no, so it was a, it's like a little Linux computer that runs, you know, uh, it was running our code last time, but it was kind of a mess last time because it was booting up Chromium and trying to run the website through that and just broadcasting from that, and then you couldn't restart it without SSHing into it. It was very bad. Yeah. Now we have a slightly better, more user-friendly version that at least the, the stage managers and the people, the crew helping us are able to interact with and restart and notice if it has problems and stuff. The phone but, is a lot more friendly. Yeah. yeah. And this is actually a, an app that you created, right? Oh, yeah. So I wrote this app in React Native, if that means anything to anyone. Oh, thank you, Bobo. She says, great job, Barbara. <laughs> thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this app is written in React Native. So I was hoping I could share some of the code between the front end and this app. In the end, it ended up being quite different anyway, but still, it's still using React. So it looks almost exactly the same. You want to see if we've got some code? Yeah, it looks. It all looks like this. Yeah. Uh, but the result of having the app is that we now have this monitor on the front, which uh, can also display whatever's on the phone. So I don't have to program it twice. It's very easy. It can just display the latest chat messages, which is scrolling up as you write them. It displays your name in the bottom left. And it's got some debugging stuff across the top. Uh, so that we can notice if you've lost the connections that are sending out the video and the data and the audio and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it makes the show running actually much easier and then much yes. more, uh, you know, um, more people can adapt to it. Yeah. Yeah, because we had to be in five different locations. We couldn't have somebody who's a programmer in all of the locations. So it had to be usable by people like to be able me. to debug it, restart it, that kind of stuff. So the app was really great for that, in spite of the quirks like, of the iPhone. Like for us, like operate, like it's like if there's network issue or anything, we start. No. Yeah. We start. <laughs> quit uh, the app, quit restart. The app, we start. <laughs> and then we know like how to like operate. And then we know like there's a debug. And then we know like, okay, now it's good. And then, yeah. Yeah. So even even people like me can operate. I'm one of the mechatronics assistant. Come on, in the beach on the beach. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, so Kenny's already mentioned the three boards. Uh, so I'm just going to mention briefly what the code does on each of them. So again, you'll see this Raspberry Pi logo on this one is a Pi Pico on the left, a Tinty Kenny mentioned in the middle, and this ESP on the right. So the one on the left is doing all of the distance sensors, the time of flight sensors that stop you bumping into things, in theory. They, they still struggled, struggled a lot due to the interference from the RFID, but some of the time, especially going backwards, we're able to stop you a few centimeters from any object. So that's what that one does. Middle one is doing the RFID and the motors and what else? LEDs, buttons, stuff like that. Yeah. And the one on the right is doing the connection to the iPhone. We had a few different iterations of how we were going to connect to the iPhone. Originally, we were doing it via Ethernet, uh, which, which sounds a lot more reliable in theory to have a, a cable running to do it. But it, it tended, it was a disaster. Uh, and we found... We, I with the iPhone, it was a disaster. Yeah, normally it's a great idea, but in this case, the iPhone would drop the connection all the time, and we had to change to Wi-Fi. Uh, but we still use this board. So, uh, well, can I show you the code? Looks like this. It looks very similar to the other code. Honestly, it's very different. <laughs> so this is Arduino code this time. Previous code was all TypeScript. Please share your creative process behind the narratives. How did we're going to share about the narratives very shortly? I'll, I'll skip past the code. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about I'm this. There. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's three servers running on AWS. It's all free and open source software. There's no uh, third party service that we're using. 
uh, which makes it very good because you can reduce the latency by having all the servers locally in Hong Kong or in whichever place you want to do it. It looks like this. Uh, the code for that looks like this. Bye bye. Uh, database looks like this. We had so the ridiculous thing is we had to build this whole a ticketing system. We had to build Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever. We had to build a multiplayer 3D online game, all before you could do anything really to get it working like this, to get all the pieces to come together so you can drive around and transition between different worlds. <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to bore you with any more programming, and we're going to go and talk about the creative stuff. Yeah, so we have actually uh, actually built a ticketing system, an online th uh, 3D space, uh, like online game thing, uh, with uh, kind of like a Zoom meeting things. And people can also observe this Zoom meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we never thought about that kind, like we, we need to build so much stuff based on that scrap paper that I showed you before, but turns out it's, it's, it's how it has to be, right? <laughs> Yeah, it can't. You've got to do all of these yeah. crazy, complicated things to do a very clean and, and simple-seeming yeah. transition between the worlds. Yeah. Arissa asked, what was the craziest thing happened behind the scene during the show? I think it's our WhatsApp group. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'll, I'll let you know later on because we're going into that part, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can you... Yeah, it's about the show running. So uh, in the in this show, we, when we talk about the uh, show running, uh, we have five different teams, and each teams we have uh, three people. One is the performer, and then we have a project crew, uh, and then we also have a mechatronics assistant to deal with uh, mainly the car setup and everything. Yeah. But actually, everybody in the team knows how to deal with the car. They all learn how to uh, restart the app, uh, restart the car, or how to connect the Wi-Fi and what you should do. Fix and the all gimbal, turn fix the gimbal, the gimbal off and on. Yeah, fix yeah. the gimbal, and push the buttons on the monitor to make sure that it's uh, mirroring each other. Things like charge the car, whatever. Yeah, so everything they need to learn, and it's via a WhatsApp group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the craziest things. We actually got like hundreds of messages in that WhatsApp group per show, you know, talking to each other or also sharing cats, photo <laughs> and um, stuff like that in, in the group too. Uh, but yeah, so this is the, uh, the Ping Zhao. Uh, it's very funny. We had, we had things like uh, panic, we, the we server restarted and then here's a nice cat photo. <laughs> panic, <laughs> restart, restart the phones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that WhatsApp group is full of, yeah. Oh, yeah, King is there. <laughs> yeah. So, Carla, yeah, Carla kinda, and restarted. Kinda yeah. restarted. We, we always cat. have this kind of thing. So, this is the, uh, the team in Ping Chao, and then we have a team at home. Uh, also, the, um, the, 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 the home base, the base, uh, the show running, communicating with the audience or, uh, or you know, looking at errors uh, going yeah, on. This was the tech support team. If anyone yeah. had to interact with tech support, yeah. here we were, yeah, either yeah. on the roof or squashed into the tiny, tiny spare room. Yeah. And then we also have this uh, this garden team. You can see that is the cute cat that always got shared on our WhatsApp uh, <laughs> WhatsApp group. And uh, yeah, and uh, we also have the U-Haul team. And uh, yeah, uh, and this is the West Kowloon team. Uh, they took it in their indoor because the uh, the second week we we have quite uh, heavy rains in the the West Kowloon area. And but before that we were on a rooftop, which uh, you can see some of the videos. And this is the indoor uh, ring plan area. Yep. So um, and also the observer host team. Uh, which is actually the same studio, this studio, yeah. And uh, we have the host uh, Yo-Yo and Arissa there, and with our um, assistant, uh, the uh, observer uh, broadcasting assistant there, yeah. So uh, this is one of our crew uh, learning, or you know, restarting the car, maybe during the show or before the show. I don't know exactly, but uh, this is uh, what we need to do. Uh, we communicate it in the WhatsApp and what's going, what's going on. Uh, you know, what's the. Uh, what should we do? And then we're kind of like listening to um, IFA's command mostly. Yeah, that's not commands. Just you know, communication. I'm just reporting errors from the server. I'm yeah, yeah. like watching this terrible text scroll of all the error messages and logs from the server yeah. and trying to notice if anything goes wrong. And then spamming the WhatsApp group in between yeah. the cat photos. Yeah, <laughs> and then but was that thanks for setting up a user friendly system to make all this happen? Yeah, and yeah. To be honest, I think it is very user friendly because people like me can also you know operate the car and be in charge of the mechatronics in Ping Chao. I never thought that I can do this. I was 
like so scared before I need to set off to Ping Chao because it's so remote and no one's gonna help me. And if the car broke, it broke, so that closed the portal. But mm. I did it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so Arisa said, "That's me." Yeah, that's you. Do you want to see your photos again? Yeah, here on the screen. That one is Arisa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of like what the team do and how we communicate with each other. And this is actually one very interesting thing. We never thought that a WhatsApp group can help us to run the show. Mm. We thought it would be like a total disaster when we try to do that. But actually, it turns out it, it works. And you never thought of that. Oh, it actually could be, could be that. Just that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, and Kenji, we now go back to uh, your... Uh, your questions. We're going to talk about the content creations and now we are going to introduce some of our performers. Um, we have actually five performers planted at different spaces. Uh, Boon Ho is on the beach and we also have Boon Ho here. Yeah. yeah. Take seat. Yay. Yeah. And uh, this is Elfie. We put him on the West Cullen rooftop to draw portraits for people. This is actually the second place that we planned. Bunho is actually the first person we go to find because on a beach, I don't know, I just think of him. Yeah. And then uh, we have Sam. Sam is also here today and uh, he is uh, being planted at U Hall, the listed heritage. And he also studied humanities and that's why we also bring him in and, you know, talk about communities and humanities and uh, questions like that. And then we also have Abigail. Abigail got a very special story about her own sickness and that's why she has to stay home or stay away from the sun. And then we, uh, that's why I put her in a home, uh, a home place, uh, at, at the home, I mean. Yeah. And uh, we also had July in the garden. July is also here with us today. Similar style, still in the sun <laughs> right now, yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, so we got three performers here and then maybe we can let them talk a little bit about uh, during the creative process, what they've done or, you know, uh, stuff like that, okay? Cool, sure, July, you wanna, you wanna go first? Um, yeah, what we've done in the show is basically uh, lower our levels to kind of a, for me, it's like a talking to a puppy level. So those cars are quiet. I treat them uh, like yeah. like little dogs because yeah. you can't see people's faces. Yeah. yeah, but that's the show part. But before that, we have creative process. Like uh, we, you create your own RFIDs writing, and then you also create, you know, help with creating with your own RFID problem uh, content. And you really handpick all those rubbish you put on the beach, right? So uh, for the creative process, we also use a device, a theater way to uh, make content with our performers. Although it is put in a very different way because in devising theater at the end, you might talk, uh, you know, say those words in front of the uh, audience or, you know, use other ways for, of presentation in the theater. But this time it's kind of putting words in the game and you are trying to find business in the place. So maybe see if you guys can talk a little bit about the devising and stuff Right, like I think it's really the devising process is really find a way to be present in the site we're uh, designated to be. Mm. So like we are regarded as NPCs really. So we have like a cycle of life within that <laughs> one hour. Um, uh, let me just introduce NPCs for the non-gaming audience. This means non-player. Non yeah, you can do it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> non-player characters, right? Uh, so I hope it's, it doesn't put you at too low a level. But in the in the world of this kind of gaming uh, structure, it, it means you're not the main character. So the audience is the main character really in this. And the interactivity comes from their interaction with these uh, so-called NPCs. <laughs> So basically, we, we are we are um, we're not trapped or stuck. We're just being in a kind of we need to. It's it's a little bit like acting, but not quite. Yeah, maybe I think the the real actors can. I'm a performer, so like the real actors can share a bit more on <laughs> how it is different or similar with well, like finding your uh, objective and uh, yeah. finding how to actually be there. Yeah, like it's all about being in the space, not pretending. Yeah. 我哋俾俾個麥嗰啲誒，即係演演員，我哋去講下。嗯
actually, I think this time I'm less of an actor, more like just being myself and being there and really chatting with the participants and really because uh, actually most of the stuff I really like uh, picked them up from the beaches around uh, Ping Chao. So it doesn't feel like I'm acting. Actually, I'm reminded to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not. Don't, don't go into that kind of approach or mindset. But just uh, maybe it, I'm more like a facilitator to kind of maybe like a like a host at my scene to just warm up the the the, the atmosphere or the mood uh, when they comes in, and then I introduce introduce them like this is where you are, uh, wh wh what's happening uh, with the stuff, and then what, I, what, I, what I'm doing, and then let them do their own journeys and discoveries. And then Sam, the different place the still you in the garden, supposed to be in yeah, the plants. And then the I think you can also talk about like, I don't know if you know which interaction will be or if someone will join in. Yes, I will. Because I have some students who have come here. So sometimes we, I even talk with them and there are some friendly students that they come over and uh, help introducing their place. I think it's great because uh, it's really their place yeah. and it's more convincing than I'm going to introduce it. Yeah, yeah so it's fun. And, and I remember there's a student came and told, uh, and told us that he used to uh, serve friends with uh, uh, Turkish uh, Turkish leaves, tea leaves. Oh, Turkish tea leaves. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, uh, I was uh, having a tea leaves reading ceremony there, so I was uh, so 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 he he was coming to share his experience and and it kind of uh, has some linkage to what I was doing in the place, and I think it's fun. And I think it's always an amazing moment for the uh, the participants or maybe the observers even that someone that really leave there and so suddenly like they talk to you because you don't expect they talk to you and then so suddenly they join in and it's like it's like a totally uh, different things yeah and Meredith here said I love the laughing of Bunho during the show yeah that's the reason I go to see all of Bunho shows to be honest to listen to him <laughs> laugh. Can Just one second, one second, one second. <laughs> no one, no more. No more no. <laughs> okay, okay. Too loud. I don't need the mic. Actually. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, so the next thing is like, uh, I want to ask the questions to the three of you. Is like, how is it different from other interactive shows that you have been involved in, or you know, say, 可能之前都会有做过一啲即系 you interact 嘅 show 啦，或者系 theatre 嘅嘢啦，又或者可能系一啲都系 event 上面嘅嘢啦，咁。Come to day, like what's the main difference, or you know the experience? How is it different from your previous experience? For me, it's uh, probably trying to put up a composed face in front of frustrated users behind the cars that you don't really know what's happening on their side. Sometimes they're seeing like blank things instead of me or our. Our, our environment and uh, sometimes there's the delay in their responses and especially when uh, people are not using uh, audio interaction but typing you really need to guess are they responding or are they uh, actually thinking about how to reply or are they experiencing a kind of uh, internet lag or something yeah. so like but you're in front of the their camera their camera eyes and you can't be like, oh, what's wrong with you? And then, you know, being really fidgeting. But sometimes you just have to fill the time and uh, create this illusion that they're still there or you are still there. 
or otherwise, you know, you just have to excuse yourself um, for fixing their technical problems. So it's this, it's not very difficult, but it's just uh, constant decision making um, on are you still an MPC doing uh, what you're designated to do, or are you now more of a technician um, solving their problems? But then it's just you don't have to hesitate. Um, I don't think I've done that many interactive performances, uh, but... Then how is it different from your theater? theater? Well, of course, it, because this is uh, site-specific, so... Actually, I, I consider this show a performance, I... I, I I treat it like it. It almost feels like I'm in like a Star Wars kind of scene. Like I'm I'm in Ping Chao, but like I'm at my own home planet, and then all these people coming from another corner, like the far far galaxy, like far far away, and then they come into this portal or they inhabit this robotic body to visit my own planet, and then. I know that we are still in our very first stages to develop all these uh, technology. There are still many things that we have to improve, like debugging to work uh, upon. But I really feel like I, and especially because like I'm I'm at the beach. It really, I can really imagine like this is really that kind of uh, the Star Wars planet, like out there outdoors, uh, primitive. Uh, zone and I'm 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 just like a one like leftover indigenous <laughs> planetarian or earth like <laughs> like last human on earth yeah, really that kind of feel uh, but yeah I, I think I think I want to add a bit on Bunho just touched the the uh, topic about imagination um, and I think uh, one another actor, Abigail, she also shared a bit about like you trying to fill the blanks between this human towards machine interaction with her imagination or an um, extended kind of empathy uh, because she usually would receive hugs, like virtual hugs from the from the uh, the drivers, um, and especially when uh, the hosts with the observers uh, comes and uh, like she could kind of conceive that there might be seven eight people behind the screen behind the machine that was trying to hug her. So that she shared that that made her feeling really warm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Same. And also, I found that the uh, this time the audiences are much more naughty. Naughty. Yeah. Naughty. Yeah. They like bumping into things and crash things. <laughs> and I don't know if they intentionally do it or you know just by accident. Some of them do, but yeah, yeah I don't know really. But I I found that they they have more fun and. They are, they have more freedom, as uh as uh, when I was doing shows or I was uh, uh participating in the interactive shows in theater, sometimes uh the audiences are a bit nervous. Yeah. Yeah. So they are, so so maybe they feel like they are being watched by everyone at the same time. But this time, I found that they are so willing to uh communicate and try to go into different uh, corners and yeah. like bumping things. Yeah, I, I really think because last time actually I'm a performer too. And uh, I really feel like um, uh, the performer audience relationship is very different when you are really in front of the car. Um, because now the audience have more control of the whole thing. Like they can decide where to go, they can decide when to interact, uh, where to interact, or whether do I want to interact with you or I want to just watch things or, you know, just want to do my own stuff. And it feels like my interactivity with the audience is being triggered by them. Because last time when they, when the car is just there and they still haven't locked in, I was like this. And when they lock in and you can see the color change and it's like, Hi, it feels like I'm being triggered. So my interactivity is actually triggered by them. But in interactive performances or, you know, in theater performances, the uh, audience performer relationship is totally different because as the performer, you're in charge of the things. You throw things out and then they sit there and tick it, right? 
And I think this is like a, a very different kind of feeling. Sometimes when they start to get alive, the car, you know, start moving and start saying, hello, anyone there? You feels like your brain just turn on you, or, you know, you go to that mode of, you know, what is being programmed in your head? What did you say to them? What kind of hello do you need to say to them? Have they been in here before? And those things will immediately load in your head. But then if they just rest, you know, go to the no controller state, you're just like, ooh, it's just me on the beach, you know, that kind of thing. So it feels like it's being triggered by them. And it is different because the control is not on me already. Of, of course, I have things, you know, uh, planned to interact with them, but the control is not actually driven by me. Hmm. I think this is one of the aims of using this kind of structure to give the audience a kind of freedom and power in a way over which they can go anywhere at any time, right? The portals just are open and you can travel between them in whichever order you want. And you decide what your experience is going to be. I mean, some people played it in a way that is very like a video game and they were rushing to get the tasks done and find all the objects. And some people would just want to chat to the actors and see what the story was in a yeah. particular space. So I think it's very much about trying to give the audience more power to decide how they experience the show. And because of that, that's why in our content making, we actually need to prepare a lot of different types of narrative. First of all, it's like a face to face. When I talk to you, what should I talk to you? You know, if I have stories that I want to tell you, how is it being triggered? Uh, you know, uh, a script, to be honest, is like kind of a script that I tell yeah. you. But uh, then Bobo yeah. is asking, when you worked on the script and the journey for the audience, how did you balance the portion of game and storytelling? Uh, I think this is overall a very game uh, style so that we need to borrow from them. I don't think that we do a very good job this time. I think it is a fair job. But then I think uh, later on, if I want to develop it more, because now the game narrative is like crazy. People are, you know, taking game narratives and put it into TV series like The Last of Us. Yeah. Not an advertisement, but anyway, go good watch job. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I mean, like, uh, but there is a lot of things that we can really develop. Uh, now the five different spaces, uh, they kind of connected with the give and take item or inventory task. But then apart from that, they are quite separate stories. You know, mm. people have their own separate stories and things this is kind of like we still take the non-linear non narratives that we use in contemporary theater and stuff like that mm. they kind of have a common shared topic but different things but the game narratives is actually very linear and then you can kind of follow or you know you can go to places here mm. and then things goes back together and stuff like that yeah yeah i think we need to learn more possibly from how games which are open world and allow you that kind of freedom still manage to have a, a narrative that exists in time how yeah. there's a sense of progression yeah. towards a goal or a way of moving forward or a yeah. sense of urgency because at the moment it is quite static i agree and it's quite a short show mm. It's a very short amount of time to try and get through all these different spaces. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of room to expand more if we learn more from how, how games structure their narrative. And yeah. put, well, it'd be nice to work with a game designer as well, because yeah, yeah. we're obviously all theatre and geek people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also, I think the time framework is very uh, different. You know, playing games, you put hours and hours of time in it. But now, because uh, when we plan for this, the whole program is still like a performance program. Mm. And then it's still planned under the performance framework, like how many shows, how many audience you need to accommodate, and then how long should the things be. So these things comes before the whole planning of the narratives and also the storytelling or whether we are using a game, uh, an online game uh, style, or maybe we are using just like an, a, a linear audio guide. Y you know, it's very, it's still very different. Uh, like, it, yeah, so we have those kind of producing uh, or performance producing kind of framework before we have this online game thing. So I think actually thinking about the time structure of how game works and how theater projects works. I think this is too mentality, to be honest, this time. This is what I discover. And in game world, you need more time. If you want people to really figuring, th figuring things out by themselves instead of an actor come here and tell you, actually, that is the exit button that you can press on the right-hand <laughs> side of the page. You know, <laughs> instead of they coming to tell this kind of thing, you need time for people to uh, um, 
learn that and yeah so that's why this is the different things i think in game and also um the narrative if you want people to uh, discover it instead of you know just uh, putting tasks there or you know very simply tasks there uh, i think it takes more time uh, and uh, also resources to build up the the game narrative but then this time is more like um the storytelling, we are still using the theatrical uh, devising theater way to take out the stories. We just put the words into different types of things. Sometimes we put it as a task, uh, you know, things that they like, or, you know, how how is it related to the story. For example, Abigail likes to collect stones uh, because it makes her feel closer to um, the nature. And this is actually how is it related to her own story because she cannot be physically close to nature in some ways. And July needs seeds to plant because she is a farmerish person, right? <laughs> farmerish yeah. person. Yeah. So I just cherish resources a lot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, so this is kind of like uh, some sometimes we put it in the task, sometimes we put it in the RFIDs. Uh, yeah, yeah, the word wordings there that you trigger. Sometimes we put it in their own script narrative, and um, and yeah, so sometimes we put it in the objects in the 3D space to prompt you things. So we have different ways to 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 prompt because this is how game works. But then I think we still at a very element mentory level or you know the exploration is not really that deep this time yeah but we're starting to go that way because last time we are not doing that last time is more like a guided tour yeah it's still a very theatrical things but then this time no i think it i'll say that it's more like a game that's why i don't like to say it's a performance or a show it's a project yeah a program. I, I think that it we're being pushed more in the direction of a game just by the inherent nature of the form of what we've made with the technology really that it it naturally leads you to towards this kind of structure yeah. it's very hard to go against it and still be doing a theater show where you just sit and watch yeah. when when your your movement is somehow so inherently part of what you're doing and your ability to explore a space that it's yeah. the game is really the closest analog to what you're doing here yeah. so i think we could learn a lot more from the structure of yeah. games yeah. yeah and this actually um make us really go uh multimedia it's not just about the technology or you know the crossing the, the, the you, you know the cross disciplinary between a media artist and theater artist and when we try to jam something together but at the end it still stay at a certain type of framework but this time i think um i have some different approaches that i found in um narratives it's not theatre, it's not something that I, I used to know. I think I need to read more about it, to be honest. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so this is my uh, kind of discovery on the content creative part, yeah. And I still look forward to discover more things that you can trigger or more hints people can find to, uh, to have a more complete uh, narrative. Not linear, exactly, it doesn't have to be, but more complete kind of, uh, or how the time should work. Because in theatre, we learn how to compose in time in that hour and a half, right? Yeah. But then in the gaming world, how do we compose in time? I was like, <laughs> yeah, I just, like, I, I think I still need time to figure that out. And also, um, how time works in game. I need to play more computer games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back just play also more games. Say, just yes, play more games. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I just play one game. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I used to play a lot of games. I'm a very geeky person, but I still need to learn intellectually how to do it well rather than just what I enjoy mm. playing. I think it's a different thing. Yeah. But I think we've done a pretty impressive job in creating five different worlds or six, including the 3D world. Mm. And in simultaneously in these different worlds things just happen and develop on themselves yeah. Yeah. and people because i think it's it's the difference between when you have real people actors there being npcs instead of uh computer generated yeah. figures because we kind of we experience time yeah. and we need to be there for an actual one hour yeah. and we cannot like programmed characters we repeat to you know purely repeat ourselves mm. we would i think myself like even if i've got triggers and i've got similar contents to deliver mm -hmm. according to uh, conditions um i still do it differently mm. 
And yeah, it's it's a I think it's it's an interesting thing to also look into like how time un unfolds and because uh, no one would be able to experience exactly the same thing even if they you know have make uh same choices yeah you make a very good point that we're not really making remaking a computer game with better graphics but low quality video <laughs> we are doing something a bit different because these are real people and not npcs that we've got in the spaces so there is potential to do extra stuff that you can't do in a video game and there's potential to make connections more than you can with a fictional character in a game that just has set responses. So I think that there's more potential for stuff beyond video games to do with this but that we can still learn something from their structure. Yeah, sometimes a real person is still better than the yeah. and the programmed yeah, AI, right? <laughs> now we have chat to Oh, uh, you've mentioned ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah we, we do talk about it, but then it feels like we're kind of going in the opposite direction to ChatGPT in a way, that we're doing things that hopefully the AI still can't quite do. <laughs> We've got Only to find the our human reason brain to still can need, do it. Yeah. Reason to still need us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, and also, you know, instead of creating all the spaces in the computer or, you know, in the 3D world, we go to real worlds. Yeah. That is the thing, because you could ask, why don't you just program it? Why don't you just make it all 3D? Why don't you just have it, like, have a, use the ChatGPT API to do a chatbot as an NPC yeah. instead of using a human? Uh, so like with any form, you have to find the reason why this form is special. What is this thing I can only do with this form where I have humans in front of a camera instead of an NPC in a 3D world? Yeah. yeah. Are you finding the... Answer? I don't know the answer, I'm thinking. <laughs> I think we're finding it by doing it. Mm. I think, it, for me, it's very different when you have a real person there. It's so much more compelling and, and real-time somehow that you feel on the spot that you want to, I want to now communicate with yeah. this person. Yeah, and by the way, when you talk about this, to be honest, we are actually very grateful for this chance because this is really some kind of projects that we can experiment. We're not rushed to produce a show that we have to put it on and we really have a chance to uh, explore you know um, try to not really answer the question try to even like I, I mean just find the questions and uh, yeah I think this is like some kind of uh, R&D thing that I, I do enjoy a lot. It makes me think we could learn more from more social games like D&D &D or you know stuff that you play around a table with people rather than just the kind of 3D type of game the ways of interacting within a game framework yeah. that are more for real people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, any things we want to put on, like, you know, or, you know, uh, want to add on with the, the content making? Uh, let's see if anybody has any questions online. Just play more games. Agree, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe we need to wait a bit, but then... Um, so audience online, it would be great if you have any questions that you want to ask or, you know, something that you want us to talk a little bit more about. And then you can now um, send messages to us. Uh, there's a TV right in front of us and we can look at it. Uh, yeah. And at this time, it's a big step from phase one to phase two. Thanks, guy. Oh, thank you, Bobo. Thank you. Thank Bobo. you for your support. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Also West Kellen support. <laughs> yeah. The free space. Yeah. And um and so, um, uh, before we need to answer, uh, uh, answer questions, maybe we can also talk about like future developments. Of course, this thing is something that we want to carry on doing it, or you know, maybe not just. Maybe it's not a project about this car. Maybe we can put this car in some other projects, and you you know, the application could be a little bit more wide. And um, so, any other things that we look forward for the future. You want to stuff us? <laughs> or you want? I just, I just passed the mic to Caddy. <laughs> just quietly. Just like two days after, so we haven't thought about it. Yet. No, we'll I, we, we have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the main things, obviously, is to try and take the cars to other countries because there's such potential in this teleportation idea that we're not really limited by space. Mm. We've done it in you know miles apart in Hong Kong, just over the internet anyway, so that it has the potential that you could put one car in one country, another car in a different country, and just teleport between the spaces. So it's it's really 
ideally, if we can make them as far apart as possible, as, as diverse as possible, that we can have a very interesting experience for the audience. As long as there is a 5G connection. Yeah, Just yeah. Just like uh, one of the things is like, we have a uh, heavy rain in the in the in the first week, uh, in the second week. Actually, we kind of like moved the location to another place. The setup is quite like quickly because the five as long as there's five G connection, then we just turn turn on yeah, the car yeah, yeah. and then we're just there. Yeah. So yeah. And this time, I've actually bought some uh, beach toys. You know building sand castle that kind of toys for Bunho and then they are like the seven wonders in the world and I was thinking like sometimes when he built the sand castle I was thinking oh if we can really go to the real Chichen Itza and also the real uh, Taimaha that would be great I mean yeah. it's just just teleport to there instead going of to get permission to do that it, yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the difficult part. So Bobo is the asking rights us, to the city. We'll, we'll ask, yeah. <laughs> Can it be a, dur a durational game or performance given with unlimited battery supply and random performers do uh, on the spot? Yeah. yeah. Someone I said the car can go to the pyramid. I think charging the car could be one of the missions. So. <laughs> yeah. So it could be a durational. You could find a battery somewhere and get it swapped for you. Yeah. And the phone could stay on during that because the phone has a separate battery. Yeah, you could do that. We did. We did think uh, of making it a much longer show, or you know, a part of the process of thinking of the structure. Yeah, we're thinking, how long is it going to be? And we're still kind of stuck in this theatre mode of we have to ticket a short performance, um, just due to manpower and stuff like that. So I think it would work much better in a way as a durational, or you can log in any time kind of performance log in log out and you get a ticket for a day or something there's a lot of potential to change the way we think about how it's performed how it's run yeah also talking about games and then i think also we can borrow a lot from board games as well because like board game is like human to human yeah. interaction also all the maybe you have a hidden task and then you yeah. just use your communication to yeah. to talk through the things and i think this could be one of the things that we could explore. Yeah, yeah this is also one of the things that we try to uh, want to improve uh, in this phase, but then we really haven't really um, put much time in it or mm. don't have much time to, with, to put in that. It's the interactions between the uh, observers and also uh, the the, uh, the participants and um yeah, and different parties in it. How can can collaborate together to form the narratives? And this is also one of the things that I think we can try to explore. Mm -hmm. And um, and here I also want to say that uh, uh, the audience of feedback is actually uh, very important. And uh, we've also read the audience feedback from phase two. Um, uh, and uh, a lot of them is talking about it would be great that it can go to some other places, but also it would be great if we can have a more development on the... Um, narrative of the whole program yeah so uh, deeper narrative this is always like people uh, things that people look forward to even for online games people still look for you know better narratives and things like that i think the whole world is you know um uh trying to go th or get through that and um I really want to say that the audience feedback is very important to us because we actually make a lot of improvements based on the audience feedback from phase one even adding the emojis <laughs> yeah, we add the emojis this time in the chat for people to have, uh, like, some people, like, maybe they don't want to type as much or maybe they, they more want to just observe the whole thing. But they sometimes want to give reactions. So you can also give us emoji on Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they can just click emojis. It's easier for them. And then we actually did this because an audience remind us, ah, why don't you put some emojis in here? And mm. yeah. Yeah, but also the technical information we've got from the audience has been really helpful. When they call us up on tech support and they tell us exactly what the problem is and then we can try and help them through it. But also it's it's great because we haven't managed to test it with a large audience before this show. Thank you for paying for tickets for helping us test. Uh, that we've managed to like fix it the next day or something. If somebody's got a Wi-Fi, like we had this thing where work people with really secure work Wi-Fi wasn't working on the first day and then we managed to work out why and fix it for the second day. And then somebody had it on their work computer, it wasn't working because there was a port blocked and then the next day we managed to fix it again. So we've really made a lot of technical progress just from being able to try it with a, a wider audience who has the patience to tell us what's not working.
So we're really grateful for that. Yeah, so Kinji here say, we'd love to be able to talk instead of online chat with another player so we could team up or something. Mm -hmm. Someone yelled red car to me and only after a while I realized it was from the car with yellow LED light next to me. It was a little <laughs> challenging to talk with them. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, I think in some of the uh, places, especially the outdoor places, uh, like now, they are a little bit difficult to hear. Yeah. yeah, we are very close to that, putting uh, amplifiers on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. But this time, you know, when yeah. technology tells you something is close, it actually takes a few more months. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we definitely want to try using external input and output devices on the iPhone. At the moment, we've just got the microphone and the speaker on the iPhone. Yeah. The other problem is that we've still got some sound uh, noise cancel cancellation happening on the iPhone itself. Mm -hmm. So the audio is not great. I managed to disable it on the front end and do some manual stuff instead. Mm -hmm. But I hope for next time we'll fix all the all of that kind of issue. We really want to try putting a binaural head or you know stereo microphones on the car so you yeah, feel more. Yeah, I think more, we got a suggestion. If you're wearing from... headphones, you feel more immersed in it. Yeah, I yeah. think it is also one, one of the audience of these suggestions. That out too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a lot more we can do to make the audio better. I'm afraid Sam's music uh, was probably totally inaudible because <laughs> there's still all this noise cancellation stuff happening and it's not necessary because the car's so quiet and we could do it manually with the data so we can definitely improve that and then it is really nice when the audience is able to communicate with each other in the spaces uh, because when two cars start talking to each other it's very it totally changes uh the feeling of the performance <laughs> yellow car won't sit chair are you here red car was me <laughs> Yellow car won't. Sick chair chair, are you here? Red car was me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we also have a lot of recording about, you know, this kind of conversation between the cars. Some oh, of yeah, them yeah, are like, actually quite funny, you know, they don't know each other or maybe they do, but then they know, don't know that is that person in the car. So it's, it's quite fun. Mm. So um, use an app. So um, the last thing is like putting this thing on an app. This time we still need people to use their desktop or laptops. And uh, we have talked about it. Maybe we can put it on an app and people can still access to it because not everybody have a computer. Mm. And what do you think, Ivor? I really wanted to do it. It's, it's one of these things where I felt I was so close to being able to do it because I was using the same same kind of code between the, the website and the app in a way. I thought it would just be an easy you know, fix, yeah. just, uh, but it wasn't at all, no. Uh, I was naive. Yeah. <laughs> I made a kind of interface to use uh, use touch to be able to control the car. Mm -hmm. And I made a video receiver on the app as well. I felt like I was nearly there. It just needs like another half a year yeah. or something. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, given that the programming team just got you in it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that is the problem. Yeah, yeah that's quite uh, fair. So <laughs> yeah. so that's why when we say that it uh, it's very close, it actually takes a little bit more than close. If I had right? 10 people, it'd be very close. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> it's just me. Yeah. yeah, it's half a year. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think, I mean, same, same as the car. Yeah, yeah. Trying, to, mm -hmm. uh, uh, trying to expand the mechatronics department. <laughs> yeah, if uh, more people, more car, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sim simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Simple. yeah. Yeah, I also want to talk to more people about how to plan a game narrative or, you know, maybe at least I should play more games. Yeah. So let's see if we have any more questions. Anyone have any questions to ask? Like you can ask right now, or you, if you want to see the coding page of Ivor's coding, uh, you can also let they us know here. They don't, want to see it. <laughs> they don't want to see the code, but if there's any geeky technical people out there who want to know anything specific, you can ask anything specific and I'll try and answer. Yeah. Yeah, or email us, yeah. or email us on uh, info at rooftopproductions.hk. I can put the email down there. Yeah. So, any other things? Should we wait a little bit? About I think it? there was another idea we had where we really want to have more interaction with the real world. At the moment, the RFID limitation is that you scan the flag and you know you scan the flag, but the flag doesn't know that you've scanned it. And the real the real cool thing would be is if you're able to change things or make things happen in the real world around you and they need to be aware of you as well as you being aware of them. So I think we'll experiment a bit more with whether RFID is the right technology for this or whether we're able to do some kind of positioning with multiple Bluetooth things or we're, we need to still keep experimenting with how we change things in the real world. And changing the, the things in the real world also helping, I mean, the, the actors to in the communicate between the worlds. I think I think that will be making the whole performance differently. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Mm. 
the internet of things yeah. indeed <laughs> Yeah, it would be great to have some robots. I think somebody else mentioned to me they want robot NPCs or things that like other cars moving around in the space that are performing. One of our one of the um, audience was pretending to be an ice cream truck and playing music as he drove around. <laughs> that was fantastic performance. Yeah. That I think there's more potential to do that stuff with robots and maybe trigger the robot with another thing on the car. Yeah. Mm. Any other questions? Yeah. So Kenji, uh, Kenji say it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support. You. Yeah, and also thanks uh, for the support uh, from all of our audience at Presence Phase Two. Um, uh, we have a lot of uh, technical things that we have to uh, deal with, but then uh, I also thank you for your support and your patience. You know, going through the whole things with us. And uh, actually, at the second week, we. Uh, Doing it better. It gets right? better every time. Yeah. yeah it gets better yeah, every gradually. time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I've also leave like uh, our contact there. So you can feel free to contact um, Facebook, IG, or email us uh, at info at rooftopproductions.hk. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Kenny, what is your Facebook and Instagram? Uh, things that move dot XYZ. Okay. You, you can type in the comments so that people can help you to do it and uh bubble said look forward to the phase three wow yeah i do too <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think we will um take a bit of rest from programming for now <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh we will go back to uh, theater for a bit <laughs> and then we are always happy to come back to um presence and also all these um Technology, application, hybridity, performance, telepresence, or the hashtag in our <laughs> IG. Yeah. So that's all from us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Stay in touch. Bye. <laughs>